Today on the Commander's Report, I got my report card for rookie quarterback Jaden Daniels to this point in OTAs as we gear up for the start of Commander's Mandatory Minicamp tomorrow. And I'm going to discuss whether or not he's been the best rookie quarterback in the NFL, period, through OTAs to this point. Then make sure you guys stick around because we're going to be breaking down uh, offensive line coach Bobby Johnson's comments on the left tackle position and how it's going so far. But before we get into today's news and rumors action, tomorrow, like I said, it is the start of mandatory minicamp for the Washington Commanders, and we're going to be right here throughout the week giving you guys premium content on the Commanders, letting you guys know winners and losers, takeaways, everything that's going down uh, uh, for mandatory minicamp this week, all the biggest news stories. We're going to have you guys covered, so make sure you guys click that subscribe button right now to never miss a big story throughout this week and throughout the offseason. So let's talk about Jaden Daniels here. And it's actually been a little while since we've talked about Jaden uh, since the early days of OTAs. And listen, man, there hasn't been really much to report other than the kid looks relatively smooth and he looks like he's picking up the offense pretty darn well. Seems like uh, this offense that Cliff Kingsbury, the offensive coordinator, is implementing uh, is definitely something that's translatable for Jaden as he heads into the National Football League. And compared to other rookie quarterbacks who are struggling, Jaden Daniels is kind of getting off to kind of a smooth start here to his NFL career. It is just OTAs, but every other top rookie quarterback is struggling, according to reports from a number of different sources. Let's start with number one overall pick. Caleb Williams, and John Greenberg is the Bears writer for The Athletic. This is what he had to say about the Bears' offense. Occasionally, the offense struggles to line up or get a play off. That's definitely on the quarterback. Struggling to line up and being able to get a playoff means the Bears' offense. Williams included have more to memorize from offensive coordinator Shane Waldron's playbook. And then also, a different Bears writer had this to say on Caleb Williams specifically. Williams' performance during OTAs was a roller coaster. He flashed impressive arm abilities. However, he's struggling to take snaps and hasn't learned to deal with pressure yet. That's not uncommon for a rookie, but Williams isn't supposed to be a common rookie. And then uh, you talk about the guy that a lot of people here in the Commanders community wanted to take number two overall, Drake May. He admitted to reporters at the end of last week that he threw multiple interceptions during team periods last week and that he was getting flustered by the New England Patriot defense. Now that is against the first team. He is getting more first team reps there in New England, which is, I guess, a sign that he might be uh, the week one starter at least starting early there in Foxborough. But man, the struggles are definitely apparent for Drake May processing NFL-level defenses. Then we get to J.J. McCarthy at the Minnesota Vikings here. And uh, Kevin Seifert from ESPN had this to say about the Michigan QB, or former Michigan QB. McCarthy's throws have plenty of juice, but have not always been accurate. After years of watching Kirk Cousins' precision throws, the lack of consistency has been noticeable. So listen, man, when you hear all these reports of J.J. McCarthy having trouble with accuracy and Caleb Williams having a tough time getting in and out of the huddle and all these different things and handling pressure, and then you hear Jaden Daniels, and the stuff that you hear about J.D. is that he is doing an excellent job. He's, he's working well with the receivers. He's getting the ball out on time. He's throwing with touch and accuracy. This is what John Kime from ESPN had to say about Jaden Daniels to this point in OTAs. So much hinges on Daniels' development, and at OTAs, he displayed a lot of what the commanders loved about him before the draft. Accuracy, touch, and work ethic. He also has shown poise and patience. So listen, you know, when it comes to some of the other quarterbacks, it doesn't take all that much to go and find bad reps or bad drives or bad stretches or bad uh, news, you know, reports about them. But then you get to JD and it's really tough to find, uh, you know, tough drives, tough reps. And the only one I was able to dig up comes from NBC Sports' J.P. Finley, where Jaden Daniels had one tough drive. He says, rough series for offense and Daniels thrown out back of the end zone intentionally on second down would have been picked on third on, uh, on underthrown corner fade. So listen, man, it's just not that all that much in terms of the struggles for Jaden Daniels to this point. And that's uh, definitely a good sign for Commanders fans as they are hoping that J.D. is going to be the next franchise quarterback and star quarterback here of the Washington Commanders franchise moving forward. And to this point, he looks like the real deal. But there is a fair warning here, guys. It's just OTAs, all right? It's just football in shorts, which, of course, isn't real football. 
We're not going to see guys in pads, and if Jaden can handle the physical uh, element of the game and all this, and if he you know, can still handle pressure with poise uh, and patience when there's guys with pads trying to take his, uh, you know, take his dome off, essentially. So listen, I think that Jaden Daniels has done a really good job to this point, but football is a physical sport, and until you add the physical element to the game, we're never really going to know what Jaden Daniels is capable of, but he's looking damn good right now in his execution, his accuracy, and his touch. Now predict it for me down there in the comments section. Which rookie quarterback will have the best 2024 season? Will it be our Jaden Daniels? Will it be Caleb Williams with the Bears? Will it be, I don't know, J.J. McCarthy if you think that he's good? Let me know down there in the comments section what you guys think for today's pinned comment. Coming up here, I'm going to tell you about today's sponsor, Fanatics. While I talk about Fanatics, go down there, find that pinned comment, and let me know which rookie quarterback you think has the best rookie campaign. And with that, let's have a word from our sponsor here at Fanatics. Go to chatsports.com slash Daniels to pick up a brand new Jaden Daniels Washington Commanders jersey and make an investment today in JD5. Man, I think that these jerseys are absolutely sweet. Our friends at Fanatics make really high quality stuff, so you can go chatsports.com slash Daniels. I'll put the link to that in the comments and description of today's show. And if you use that link and you make a purchase, Fanatics will send part of the proceeds to us here at the Commander's Report to give you guys more Commander's content for free every single day. So if you are planning on getting a Jaden Daniels jersey anyway, help out the channel right now by going to chatsports.com slash Daniels and picking up your Jaden Daniels jersey today. Okay, now let's get into offensive line coach uh, Bobby Johnson here who gives uh, an update on the left tackle position because that is a big question mark heading into the 2024 season. Will it be Cornelius Lucas? Will it be Brandon Coleman, the rookie out of TCU? Who is going to be protecting Jaden Daniels' blind side in his rookie season? And this is what Bobby Johnson had to say. It's still a little early to say how confident we are in anything. I'm pleased with the progress Lucas and Coleman have made. At this point, I don't see any red flags that give me pause, but once again, it's still early. And essentially what Bobby's saying here is that nothing is settled, nor should it be. Because right now, like we said with Jaden Daniels, I mean, you know, the pads haven't gone on. And this isn't the most physical position on the football field, the offensive and defensive line. So I don't want to hear anything about, you know, for sure how guys are performing in OTAs to this point because they haven't put on pads. And it's completely different when you add that element to the game. So I do think... Uh, at this point, Bobby Johnson's completely correct in saying it's way too early to make a determination. But I do worry in general about the left tackle options here in Washington. I mean, Cornelius Lucas last year had a pro football focus grade of 62.8 in limited action. It wasn't all that great. His final game of the year, he gave up three sacks in one game to the Dallas Cowboys. And that's who you're planning on trotting out there week one. Uh, and then you get Brandon Coleman, who had a 58.1 pro football focus grade in college, in the Big 12 with TCU last year. Are we really expecting him to, to be better than what he was in college last year at the NFL level on the blind side, on the left side of the offensive line? I definitely think at this point Cornelius Lucas, you know, as the veteran option is probably better. Uh, you know, Brandon Coleman definitely gives me pause in terms of, you know, his foot speed. And, you know, he did not have a good senior bowl week either when he was apparently fully healthy. But let me know down there in the comments section, who do you think is the better option at left tackle? Type CL for Cornelius Lucas. Or if you think the third round rookie Brandon Coleman uh, is going to prove me wrong here, type BC down there in the comments. Now, in terms of the offensive line as a whole here, I'm also worried about new offensive line coach Bobby Johnson because he, he's coming to us from the New York Giants, okay, from last year. He got fired, uh, and probably for good reason. That offensive line in New York was terrible, okay? Andrew Thomas is one of the most talented, one of the best left tackles in football. His pro football focus grade was low for him at 76.1, okay? And he was playing a little bit injured, so, you know, maybe we give Bobby a pass there. But then everywhere else, it's been terrible. Evan Neal was one of a, the most talented offensive tackle prospects to come out in the last decade, and he's completely ruined him. A 39.8 pro football focus grade? Holy crap, he was the worst right tackle in the game last year that got significant snaps. John Michael Schmitz, who I thought was a really good center coming out of Minnesota last year, had a terrible rookie season. And then the guard play was terrible as well. And if you don't believe the pro football focus grades, because listen, we know pro football focus grades aren't gospel. Let's look at the pressure rates, all right? Tyrod Taylor, Daniel Jones, and Tommy DeVito were one, two, and three, the most pressured quarterbacks in football last year. And if they're all played for the same team. That just shows 
shows you how terrible that offensive line was last year at protecting the quarterback. And guess who was leading the charge and who was leading practices and all this different stuff? It was Bobby Johnson, who is currently here in Washington. And then, you know, you look at our offensive line talent right now in Washington, and it's not exactly great. I mean, we got Cornelius Lucas, who's a replacement level starter. Nick Allegretti has never held a full-time starting position in the league. Tyler Biotish, uh, I think is fine, but you know, if he gets bad coaching, could he take a step down? Potentially. Uh, Sam Cosme is the only guy I really feel super confident in. And then Andrew Wiley gave up nine sacks last year. If Bobby Johnson makes him even worse, I mean, I don't even know if Andrew Wiley can get worse, man. So I am worried about Bobby Johnson coming in here and being the offensive line coach here in Washington. His, you know, the most recent what we've seen from his offensive lines and his developing young players and all this different stuff, it's not a good track record here in the recent past, but I hope that he proves me wrong. I hope he, he bounces back here in Washington, and I hope he can build an awesome offensive line here in the nation's capital. Now let me know down there in the comments section, what is your concern level for this year's offensive line? Not only is it on paper one of the least talented units in football, but you also got maybe the worst offensive line coach from the 2023 season leading the way and coaching this group. So let me know on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being not worried at all to 10 being I am panicking. Put it on a scale to 1 to 10 for me down there in the comments section. And that'll be it for today's show, guys. Really do appreciate all of your support. We got more Commander's content coming your way from Commander's Mandatory Minicamp all week long, so make sure you click that subscribe button to never miss a video.